Welcome to the Realistic Water Physics version 3.0 interface tutorial. I will explain some of the basic features the asset has. After you install the asset, you can open the menu on the top, Window, Realistic Physics, Realistic Water Physics, Manager. This is the window you will be using most of the time. I will go to each menu and explain what options you have. We have two water types to work. For now, we will use the global water level. This will give us additional options. Because we are using a global water level, we need to define what type of water we will be using. For now, let's keep it to salt water. Then we, then we need to select the horizontal position of where the water will be. We will keep this at zero now. You can also use a game object to access your water level. For this example, we will generate one. If we select a newly generated water plane game object, you can see there is no collider attached. However, we will change the material to water, so we can see underneath it. From this menu, we can also change the air settings. Disabling air settings is not recommended, because with air enabled, objects in the water will react more stable. Again, we need to set the air classification. For now, we will keep this to air. Objects above the max air level will not have air physics enabled. So we keep this to a high level. A thousand should do. In the Manage Game Objects menu, we can create new objects or manage existing ones. We we'll first create a new game object, cube. Once you select your game objects in the editor, the window will automatically add them and test them. Game object settings, floating quality, extremely low, best performance, lowest quality, especially used for objects in the background that users will most likely not see, low, great performance, decent quality, used for background objects only, medium, good performance, good quality, used for small boats and small objects the players might interact with, high, decent performance, high quality. Used for small boats and small objects, medium objects the players might interact with. Extremely high. Worst performance, best quality. Definitely not used on big objects. For now we will go with medium. Material list. What material list do we want to select from? Default. Contains all the built-in materials. Custom. Only contains the custom made materials. Material type type of material that is used for this game object. Solid material, the material that we will apply to this game object. For now, let's go with oak. Percentage solid, how much of the object is solid? For example, a donut has a big hole in the middle. That might be about 60% solid, while this cube is probably about 100. Let's keep this at 100 then. If the game object in the editor is selected, the window will automatically test them and check if all the required components are present. Any changes to the object requires a rerun of the tests. Show results will give us the results. This object will float in water, but will not, not float in air. Once we are happy with the settings, we can create and update the script. As you can see, a buoyancy component has been added to the game object. The overview gives you information about the buoyancy component. The settings will contain some extra settings for the buoyancy component. Mass modifier allows you to change the mass of the game object without recalculating everything. Percentage solid is the same as in the menu. Percentage solid. Dampening options. These options allow you to change how the water will dampen the object or the air will dampen the object. The center of mass settings allows you to change the center of mass of this object. The density multiplier allows you to change the density of the object without changing the material. Once you're done changing the settings, always press the update button. The advanced menu contains advanced settings for the buoyancy component, but more information about this in another video. The support menu contains support options for enabled support. In the support menu, you can enable and disable support for other assets. Always make sure you have the assets installed before unlocking the support for it. Create custom materials allows you to create new custom materials to be used in the asset. To create a new material, first select the material type of what you want to create. Then enter in a name of the material. Then select the density of the new material. This value must always be kilograms per square meter. For more information about density, look up density. 
in Wikipedia. Once you're done with all the settings, press the Create New Material button. To change an existing custom material, click the Update Existing button. Select the material type list, select the material you want to change, and now you can alter its density and update the material. From here you can also delete the material. Another water type we can use is the water area. However, water areas are not compatible with global water levels. So we need to disable that in the manager, setup world, and uncheck the use global water level. A water area uses a different system than the water plane, therefore we need to disable the water plane. Create a new cube. Make it slightly bigger. And for now, let's make it a water material. Water areas are using the same system as the buoyancy component. Therefore, selecting them in the editor will automatically add them to the window. You can now select the material list to choose from. Select the material type and the liquid material this water is. Now you need to select what type of trigger this water area will be using. Trigger is the fastest way to detect if an object is in the water or not. Collider slightly slower than the trigger. Dimensions currently work in progress and may not work at all. Once you're done with the settings, create an update. This will create a water area component. The overview will show a bit of information about the water area component. You can change the collider type. With force apply settings enabled, the script will make sure everything is set up correctly. The water level the top of the cube in world space. If force apply settings is enabled, this value will be set automatically. The advanced options allows you to add a flow direction. Objects that are in the water will flow in that direction. The flow speed multiplier is how fast objects will flow in that direction. If support is enabled, additional options will show up here. In the settings page, you can change settings that affect the entire asset. Enabling advanced options allows you to bypass the check to check if an object is compatible. This way you can create an object that has no collider or mesh filter. However, as this is only useful in particular cases, we advise that you have this option disabled. Debug information enabled, you will receive additional information about what the asset does. However, it can generate a bit of spam in the console and garbage collection. Therefore it's recommended to only use this when an object is not reacting the way you expect it to. As you might have noticed, the asset is using a custom skin. If you don't like the skin, or rather go to the Unity default skin, you can disable this option. This was the Realistic Water Physics 3.0 interface tutorial. I hope it helps. For more information you can always read the manual, step by step instructions there as well.